Hello everyone. Um, this is a Ceradyme video on a topic that was requested to me a long time ago, like sometime in 2016, probably midway through the year if I had to guess, by my friend Jesse. Um, and this is probably the lightest topic I've ever talked about on Ceradyme videos. I figured I'd, I'd just not get too heavy every single time. It's kind of a nice break to just talk about something more fun. Um, I figured I'd discuss um, a few date ideas that Preston and I either have done or have heard about that are inexpensive and not super common because you can look up the 10 best dates to do on a budget, but a lot of them have similar things and I, I won't say that mine are the most original ever, but they aren't done as much as I think they should be done. So I figured I'd share five ideas for you. Um, but really quickly, because I'm married and a woman of God, there are certain things that I recommend only for married couples. And I plan to link or describe some of those things in the description with the hope that it doesn't get snatched up by teenage lovebirds or something who don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Some things simply are not appropriate for certain age groups or walks of life in relationships, like if you're not even engaged or married yet. So I will hesitatingly give you more ideas down below. Um, but again, most of it will probably be more appropriate for married couples. But this video will have options for everyone, pretty much. Um, and dating is super important, but it doesn't have to be solemn or serious. I'm saying that dating really is just creative ways to get to know someone, and it shouldn't be, in my opinion, a tedious task with our best face, best clothes, and our highlight reel with the sole or, or ulterior motive to result in sex. There is a lot more to pursuing someone you are attracted to or married to than merely interviewing someone about their hobbies and favorite foods over a hot meal, although those can be fun dates too. Um, I'm not even talking just about my Christian values. I think most non-Christians would still like dating to not have an unrealistic pressure or expectation to be that intimate that quickly, even when you want to be that intimate. You know what I'm saying? If I'm wrong, this video can still be for you because dating can be put on the back burner, especially in marriage or after having kids, and it doesn't have to. I think that some of the ideas or all of the ideas I'm going to suggest are reasonable, affordable, or free, and appropriate for most people and something you would enjoy. And it doesn't have to take a lot of time. It can be a half hour, a week kind of thing. All right, so um, let me just adjust a little bit so I can see a little bit easier. Um, the first date idea, this is the one my husband and I did most recently. I want to make sure you can see it. I'm writing it out just so you can kind of remember them a little bit easier, even after seeing the video. Secret search. Now, um, my husband and I actually, um, and on a temporary basis are really close to the Oklahoma border. So we decided we would take a trip to Lawton, Oklahoma, because, it, you know, to get to the border, it's like 15 minutes, and to get to, like, a decent area in Lawton, it was about an hour, but it kind of flopped, and other than a nice drive and the kind of rainy, cool weather, um, it didn't really pan out much. But that's okay, sometimes that happens. But on the way back because we had some leftover cash from the trip, we were like, let's uh, have $5 each and go to the store and get each other something secret, you know, not together. We have to separate in the store and buy each other something and then come together and show each other what we buy. And it was just $5. You could do $10, $15, or any amount that you're willing without breaking your budget. Um, set parameters like... If you don't want a food item, for example, that could be something. But the less you give, the better, because it kind of tests your significant other or spouse on how well they know you on things you like. Um, and 
just be graceful if they don't get something you don't like. My husband did pretty good, I would say. Um, but if for some reason they get something that you don't like, then you're just out $5. So it's really kind of a risk-free, fun little thing, and it doesn't take a lot of budgeting or planning. Um, my husband got me a lotion, which I could never be disappointed with lotions, body washes, sprays, jewelry. I mean, I'm pretty easy, and the things I want are pretty affordable. And I got him a, a thing to hang on the wall in his like man cave slash office back home. And yes, it's something that I also enjoy, so it's kind of a gift to myself, but the things he wants are probably over $100. <laughs> so it's harder to get him something uh, with just five dollars, um, but it's fun to challenge myself that way Date idea number two and this one is free um, I will admit Park play is not That original But it's um, kind of a neglected and sorely Forgotten idea for a date um, but it's free, and it's, I'll tell you why it's a really good idea, especially if you're not married yet, okay? So, the thing, the whole idea, I think it's most fun to not just go to a park, but to bring the, the ends of your bread loaf, or the bread that's a, about to turn, or, or even just good bread if you have enough. Take that with you and feed the ducks. There's always ducks at parks, as my experience has shown me. And um, make a point not to maybe be on your phone because being outdoors with probably a nice lake and grassy area and cute little kids playing around, I mean, it's um, it's so much more enjoyable when you're not on the phone unless you're taking a quick picture together. Um, so, yeah, you could do that. But here's why it's, it's nice, not just because you're getting sunlight and a little bit of exercise together but um, it's a change of scenery it doesn't cost any money and my husband and I have done this many times even when we were just friends and in pub it's in public but you're not on your own so it's the least likely possibility of us doing something romantically stupid if you know what I mean but it's you're still able to like maybe talk about important things it's when you're out without your phones You'd be surprised after a few uncomfortable minutes of silence or throwing bread at some ducks what conversations you could start having when you're just, just together and it's just you and you're forced to do very little else than talk. So it's it's a good option. It's not original, but it's kind of the best default date, I would say. Number three, and this one is also free. I have a lot of free ideas. This is called House Hunt. Pretty self-explanatory, but I need to explain a couple things about this one. Um, we didn't do this, Preston and I, before we got married, um, but I think it would be awesome for couples who are engaged, who want to look for a home to move into, or heck, even if you aren't looking for a home, find all the open houses in your area that week or the next week and make a plan to walk around and home shop, even if it's just imaginary and you're just doing it for fun. I mean... Yes, you'll probably have to sign your name and email somewhere because of the realtors who are there, probably for their safety, and so they have a database of people who visited or whatever, and you might end up getting emails you don't want. That's the only downside, but if you dare, you could even go to homes way out of your budget in ritzy neighborhoods to daydream a little bit, pretend you're rich and well-known um, in the area. Um, it can be torturous to look at homes you probably can't have, um, but if you're not actually planning to buy a home, just don't bring your checkbook. If you even use a checkbook, we don't, um, if you think you'll be tempted. But it's just a fun way to, I mean, I just think looking at beautiful homes is fun. I think even men and women both enjoy it to kind of get ideas about each other's tastes, especially before you buy a house. You need to know what each other wants so you can compromise. Number four. And this one is essentially free, depending on what you start with, but this is called Bigger or Better. It's not my idea. Most of you already know what this is. And this is another one Preston and I have not done together. I don't even think my husband has done it at all, but I have done it. Um, and for the rare few of you who 
don't know what this is, this is great, especially if you're hoping to marry and move in together because you could start your marriage off right with some things you might need without having to pay for it. So here's how it goes. You literally start off with a small item that you just have to look for in your house. A dime, a quarter, a paper clip. You know, if you've heard of that famous guy who started off with a paper clip, played this game essentially, um, probably in a more professional manner, and ended up with a house. If the people are receptive and friendly, ask them after you knock on their door um, if they have anything they'd be willing to trade your quarter or paper clip for something bigger or better and keep going house to house until you've ended up with whatever, until you're satisfied. And again, you have to be careful. Make sure there aren't any, no trespassing signs. I know people are sensitive about that, especially more than ever um, nowadays. But um, make sure it's in a neighborhood you know, you feel safe with. Don't do it alone. I mean, obviously, you got to be smart about this. Um, but it can be fun if people are being respected by you. And you can get some fun things out of this. When I played back, I think in high school when I did this, I ended up with, our group ended up with a cart, a shopping cart full of different things. I don't remember what was in it actually, but other people got like, I think a popcorn machine, a game system, and Bob Goff's son, if you've heard of author Bob Goff, he, his son played this and got a car. Um, he ended up giving the car to the church, which is amazing, but um, I mean, you'd be surprised what you could get. And it's more for the fun, adventurous, extroverted types like me. Um, just be careful and wise and respectful again. And that's about it for that one. Um, and number five. I know I said I would try to um, share date ideas that Press and I have done, but this is another one we have not done yet. Not all the way. This is called Abduction adventure okay this is free and press and I have double dated but um, not it wasn't the details weren't hidden from us which is kind of the whole point of this um, basically you find a couple who you trust and know very well friends um, you want to double date with and have them the other couple plan the date pay for the date, do all of that, pick you up. Heck, you could make it fun and even blindfold you um, and pretend like they're kidnapping you and keep it a complete surprise and have them lead the way throughout the whole whole date and just enjoy whatever they've got planned. Make sure you set your parameters ahead of time, though. Like, if you can't eat at a place with shellfish or you don't want to be so adventurous that you could get hurt kind of thing, you know, you have to set that up ahead of time before they go through the trouble. And then you can return the favor next time by inviting that couple out again, only you'll plan it, you'll pay for it, and be in charge of that one. Um, but for that first time, it's a stress-free, plan-free, money-free way to have fun. And all you have to do is get picked up and enjoy it. Um, my husband and I have not done that, remember, but about the abducting part, it's just a funny name. You don't have to get serious about it. But there was one time before I was joining the um basically the elite jazz magical choir at my high school years ago um what happened was the senior people of the group the veteran people of the group would kidnap the people who were joining the group and um it was like really late at night blindfolded put in a car their car and driven to someone's house and we got one of the people of the choir and once we got unblindfolded we would just chat and I think we did some funny games and ate food and we went to IHOP later and we I think we even went swimming like in the middle of the night it was a very interesting circumstance but I'm telling you this because the people who kidnapped me from the choir blindfolded me or practically dragging me to their car and police officers did actually look for me probably 20 minutes later and they even had a helicopter looking for me because someone across the street saw me being basically hauled off in the vehicle. So it looked like a real abduction. So just be careful. But that's just funny um, that that happened to me. And I know that probably within 20 minutes, if I got kidnapped again in that neighborhood, that someone would be there to find me quickly. So, um, But that's a fun way 
to go with someone if you can find someone willing to do all the planning and paying the first time around. Um, and I've got a document of over 50 other date ideas that press and I pick from every week or so. So if you'd like some more ideas, I'd be happy to share them. If you want clarification, have a question, or have a video request, please comment below or message me privately, and I look forward to next time.